Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series for Tuesday. Uh, today we have Fausto Pugliese, our uh, stocks trader. Uh, we've had him several times, uh, and it will be um, uh, looking at uh, you know live analysis and uh, trading uh, from a professional, learn how uh, he reads his order flow uh, and applies it to his strategies and his setups, uh, and for optimizing your entries and exits. Uh, so. Um, uh, you know, we've had him several times and uh, we get some really good insights on uh, some of these uh, stocks that he's looking at. Uh, I've got the bio here. Uh, you know, he was uh, originally one of those SOS bandits back in the day uh, in the early 90s. Uh, and um, and then, you know, worked uh, his way on up over over the years here uh, in the industry as a very successful trader. Uh, and um, uh, started his own uh, his own company basically after retiring a few times and then just uh, getting back into trading here. So uh, he's got uh, some education and mentorship um, uh, courses here. Uh, you can go through his website, uh, his Twitter, his YouTube, his his email is here, uh, and then there's a Bookmap affiliate link. You can get special deals from Fausto if you're interested. Uh, so I will paste this into the chat so you have the link directly so you don't have to copy this down. You can just click on the link uh, and then go there. Uh, all right, so uh, without further ado, oh, I need to go through the risk disclosures and then we'll just turn it right over to Fausto. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading execute or live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And with that, we will turn it right over to Fausto. All right, hold on one second. Let me uh, share my screen, everybody, and the right one. There we go. All right, everybody, so good morning, everybody. Let me get a little chat back if everyone can hear loud and clear. Let me see if everybody's wide awake. I see Michael, Pat in there, Raymond. Good to see you all. Give me a little chat and questions. If you don't answer, I can't continue. All right, there I go. Nope, can't hear anything <laughs> he's he's joking that's carl all right carl <laughs> you could joke here but we can't joke around when it comes to money right all right so anyway uh bruce thanks a lot for having me again here and um i'm gonna get right into it uh basically just like what uh, you know bruce just basically said listen trading's very very risky be very careful. I don't waste too much time on it. I know everybody could read, but just a disclaimer, there is no guarantee you're going to make money doing this, but you got to have the right tools. And that's what we're here all about. So why do I teach and why do I trade? Well, what's, who is Fausto? I don't know if you guys ever seen me before. I know this is going to be recorded and be on the YouTube channel, but let me tell you, um, I've been doing this for over 25 wonderful years. There's not a day that goes by. I do not love what I do. I've changed people's lives. Um, and there's so many people out there trading on their own and they just try to sample a little bit of everybody's stuff. And then when they finally realize that, you know what, certain people do things better than others. And then, and then, um, and then when it comes to actually trading, they're like, oh, now I get it. Now I know how this works. Now I know what this is all about. So, uh, Bruce has bunch, uh, has met me many of times, even before Bookmap. Um, I've been a 12 time world champion at the Traders Expos. I compete against every school, one of the original day traders, AK Sos Bandits. Now, why am I here? Why am I teaching? Why is Bruce have me here? Well, I'll tell you the truth. Um, I've been looking for, you know, the, my style of trading is if you anyone knows what an ECN is, um, I actually help develop the ECNs 
back in the early 90s. So uh, in ECN's electronic communication network, you can go to my YouTube channel. I got a bunch of videos on it in detail. I know you guys are a little bit more advanced. I don't want to bore you with that stuff. But um, but when you want to find out how this all came to fruition, you're looking at them. I was actually one of the people that developed it. Now, uh, over the years, I helped you know customize and built trading systems, everything else, but I could not find a system as good as the book map, how it works. Now, I don't solicit and I don't, um, I get gifts all the time from people, hey, Fausto, could you use my system? My mind's the best, mine's the best. And I blew everyone off. And when I came and I found book map, I'm like, oh my God. You know, first when I looked at it, I didn't take it seriously at all until one of my students, who's a very good trader, told me about it. Ever since then, I looked at it and I said, wow, this thing's confusing. And then I said, holy crap, this thing really makes sense. It's exactly what I've been looking to do. I actually was trying to build something like this. So I want to show you how I use it and how I, how great it works. And, um, and, and I know you people here have, you know, with Bookmap, they got great presenters. They got presenters all the time. Um, everyone has different style. Um, some people trade with options. Some people trade with futures. Um, I'm actually going to focus specifically on day trading, okay? And I do use for swing trading, but I don't use it as advanced as some of the other traders have it. Uh, but, you know, once again, if you're a beginner, I know people watching on YouTube and like, you know, just trying to like get the concept of what trading is, what is your style? Uh, I just, you know, as a trader, what I do, I keep it very, very, very simple and very clean. Now, before we move forward, I just had a question for everybody. Could everyone just get, just let me know in the trading room, what kind of trader is everybody in here? Are you a stock trader, options, futures, Forex, investor, just out of curiosity? Just see what kind of trader everybody is, so who am I speaking to? Michael, you do some day trading, stocks and options, Kyle, okay, futures, James. Michael does a little bit of everything, wow. Well, Michael, let me just tell you something. I don't know how good you are, but I was just taught one very good thing. You, you you can't be a jack of all and master of you know of none you know so can't do everything you got to be good at one thing and trust me you focus on one you'll do fine forex mark you're doing okay good no cryptocurrency guys in here right I know you could do trade uh, and one of our instructors here at Cyber Trading University does cryptos which will probably I'll talk to Bruce about having him on but you could use Bookmap for crypto also now um, how do I use Bookmap? All right, so that's basically where I'm going to go. I'm going to show you a couple of slides. We'll go right into the execution system. But let's talk about what happened yesterday. We had a huge drop off on the spies. The market came down, crashing down, and we actually had a nice little rally going into the close. And you could see there was a lot of stocks that followed along with it. Okay, NEO, everything was dropping pretty quickly. Now, personally for me, that doesn't affect me. OK, because there was a stock called ATER that had a really nice push yesterday. You could see it ran from 1050. Hold on. Oh, I got my pointer here so you guys can follow along. It ran from 1050 up to about 12. And you can see it right at the close as it go into the afternoon, just kept pushing up, up and up. You know, you do the math, thousand shares, ten dollars and fifty cents. You sell it, I don't know, 30 minutes later, 1250, you make two dollars, two dollars on a thousand shares, two thousand dollars, half a million dollar salary. Not bad for a day's worth of work, all right? But how do you find them? How do you know it's going to continue to go higher? You know, you got to have a game plan. Now, that is what the book map does. I'm going to show you that, how I use it, how I use it. And not only that, I'm going to introduce you to my traders in the room and because I have a live trading room, which I'm going to invite all of you to come and join and see it. Um, but there's a bunch of stocks that, you know, that are moving. And the goal is, you got to have a game plan. What is the trend? You know, where are the strongest price levels? This is a mistake that everyone makes. You know, it's amazing that I teach the complete opposite of what most people teach. As a day trader, I don't use indicators. Okay. And you know what? Bookmap's not an indicator. It's a platform. So let's get that straight. Listen, when you're using indicators, you're focusing on the past. Do you want to focus on the past? Oh, you want to focus on the future, right? I mean, think about it. Everybody's like, oh, of course, the future. So what the hell you keep looking at the past for? 
that's what everyone makes that mistake. They keep looking at these indicators and they keep looking at, oh, where was it? What it did back at hell with that. Go to the book map. Let's look where the orders are and be focused and not try to analyze the market, but not be a leader, be a follower. It's not a bad thing. You know, and here you have a couple of basic charts. I mean, you're looking at it. What's nice about it, and this is where I got lost. I look at all these things when I first got started. Oh my God, look at this heat map. Look at all these, you know, waves over here on the right. What the hell is a CVP? What's a COB? You know, I mean, there was just so many really features on it. But when you really think about it, to keep things simple, you know, I don't, you, know, you just got to more or less look at where are the orders. This is what Bookmap does. It tells you like this right here. That 186,000 share seller stock goes from four dollars and 25 cents, shoots back up, goes to 560, and I don't know about 15 minutes. My god, that's a lot of money right there when you think about it. And then all of a sudden, this guy comes out here, and then finally, boom, now the thing's starting to trend. And what do you think is going to happen? Okay, remember, if you put any indicator to that, they will all say, Oh, it's going higher, it's going higher. Yeah, sure enough, but. Let's go look at uh, N NIO first. Stock trends down, right? This is all pre-market, which by the way, which is great about the book map. It's got a lot of pre-market. All of a sudden, you got a big red bull right here. What does red mean? Sell, sell, sell. There was a big order out there and that order got filled. Guess what? Order got filled, broke, came all the way down to the next support level. All of a sudden, buyer was out there. He got executed, but he never left. There was a lot of refreshing going on. Went right back up to 36.16. Came back down. Buyer got executed. Still held on. 100,000 shares sell everyone. Look at the column, the COB um, uh, column. You think I trust the guy at 1,000 shares, 1,700, 2,100? No. It's this guy right here. And uh, let me choose the color here because I had the wrong color. I like red. Look at this guy right here, 104,000 share seller. No wonder why the stock went up and came back down and went up and came back down. All right. Now, let me just change the slide and show you what's going on here. Let me erase this and move on. So, look what ended up happening. We were at 35.50. 3550, the guy got done. By the way, there's something I teach in class called a Fausto flag, called consolidation. Guy got hit, guy got hit, guy got hit, boom. Guess what? Up until pre market, seven in the morning, guess who was at 35? A 270,000 share of seller, a buyer, and not only that, he added to it. So, what ended up happening? Like it or not, wish you want, hope all you want, the stock is going from 3550 down to 35. OK, I don't care what you think. I don't care what you hope. I don't care where you're at. Like it or not, you're going down 50 cents. All right. Let's look at AATER now. Stock goes up. Here's your big iceberg order at $12. So these are the things I'm looking for. And by the way, I'm going to go to the execution system and don't worry about it. I'm going to find something and we're going to go out there. We're going to trade together. I just want you to understand my style and what I use. I don't get fancy with the platform. I know it's got a lot more features, but it's those orders that predict the future, okay? Just like you have an order here, stock goes up, ALTR went all the way up to 11.17, came back down to 10, 10.50s, right around there. Look at all those red lines. Look where the guys were. Look, where the, look, at, look at all those bars, the heat map. No wonder why the stock didn't break down. It went right back up because of those buyers. Now, not only that, but look right here at 1230. Not a huge seller, but there is a seller. Look at these buyers right here. Red, look at those iceberg orders right around that 12. Look at the CVP and the CVP Delta. You could see that green bar. There was a lot of orders out there. It got filled, and that was the reason why it popped. And now what you have right here is a major resistance level around 13 and a major support level around 12. So now the stock is trading in that range. You got to remember, like you look at it, like some of you are probably looking at this and be like, 
uh, what the hell is 12 to 13? We see stocks go $4, $10. Here at Cybertrain University, the way I was trained is we don't look at dollars, we trade on a point system. A dollar on a thousand shares. Do the math. That's a thousand dollars, a quarter million dollar salary. Okay, so if you trade 200 shares, a dollar at 200 shares is $200. Do that every day. It's a $50,000 salary. I know a lot of people here would be happy with that. Now, I'm just being a realistic person. I know you see, probably watch some YouTube videos. You hear people bragging, hey, I made 3,000 today. I lost 40,000 yesterday. How the hell are you going to compete with that? That's like sitting at the blackjack table. The guy trades, here you are trading $5 hands, and here's somebody trading $5,000 hands. You can't compete with him. He's at a totally different level than you. you. And not only that, but as much as a nice person he is, you'll be embarrassed to contribute or even say something. He's like, I'm afraid that I'm going to be wrong. The thing is this, you have to follow the orders. Now, the next biggest thing for people concerned about is false breakouts, reversals. Let's look at the stock EDSIA. Looking at a basic chart, stock goes from $6, comes out with great news, Shot, shoots up to $6 in pre-market in a matter of, I don't know, 30 minutes, goes up to about 950. Now, market opens up, getting close to it, are we getting false breakouts? Where is the support and where is the resistance? See, you can't see it on a chart, but you could see the orders that are consistency, consistently there during, the mar during those hours because they're always going to be there. So just by knowing where the support and resistance are is with, those, with the heat map right there and seeing those orders, you could see resistance levels are at 10, support levels are right down here around 870. And you could see when that stock had that big pop right at the open, went from 940. If you did not know that guy was out there at 10 and did not take that 60 cent profit, which by the way, 60 cents, thousand shares, $600 in a matter of, I don't know, 10 minutes, it's about $100,000 salary, you're gonna get burned. So what price levels where more buyers and volumes get filled, the selling volume, check out the CVP Delta. Look at all those orders right there. That is what's going to tell you where the waves are and where the orders are getting executed. And by knowing that those orders got executed, look what ended up happening. Stock goes from six eight fifty and shoots up past to eleven dollars. Hits the guy out here at ten. Hits the guy out at eleven. And this is as the day goes on. Now we're at one o'clock in the afternoon. So by the way, you could trade all day long. And boom, look at that. What a really nice move. And it all started by the CVV Delta by seeing those orders getting executed. There's no red, it's all green. So let's get to it and let me kind of apply it into trading and let's go, let's go out there and show you what's happening right here. All right. So let me move this out of the way and let me bring up book map over here. All right. So you can see my book map right here. And right now we're looking at a stock called QS. Anybody hear about QS today? Anybody know anything about it? Just give me a yes or no. Anybody saw what happened with QS? Kyle, you didn't? Michael, you didn't? Anyone else? No one saw this stock QS? Damn, the thing started this morning, right from $22.50. It's at $24. I mean, the market's up 120 points, big deal. Well, all right. So let me show you what I got going on over here. QS, QS is right here. It's right now the fifth biggest percentage gainer on the NASDAQ, all right? Now, when you look at the stock right here, we found the stock at eight o'clock this morning. Now, right here, what we look at is called, I'm gonna draw a trend line right here. It's called a, what we call a Fausto flag. Okay. Does anybody know what a flag means? Anybody know what a flag? It's called consolidation. All right. They get consolidation, and what's happening, the buyers are outbeating the sellers. Now, looking at this chart right here, what do you guys think the stock's going to do? Go up or go down? What do you think? Michael thinks going up. What about you, Ram? What about you, Rex? 
Samir, what do you guys think? If you don't know the answer, give me a question mark. I'd rather you tell me that you don't know because then that means you're guessing. That's it? That's all? Bruce, I'm getting a little upset. These traders got to be a little bit more, more aggressive. You have to be an aggressive trader. I need an answer. You got to have a game plan, guys. What do you think? It's building up a demand, James is saying. There we go. My God, now I'm finally getting some people to answer. Get me a little nervous. I thought everyone's sleeping here. By the way, don't mind me. Me and Bruce are from New York. We talk a little fast. I just, sometimes I think it's the market that makes me talk faster. But um, it's going up, Mark is saying. James is saying it's hitting resistance. Okay. So anyway, most people look at this stock and say, oh, it's consolidating. It's going higher. Okay. Now, the issue is this. When you go to book map, okay. What do you guys notice the issue? What does it look like the stock is doing? How would you read this? Read this. It's trending down, James is saying. Okay. It's trend. Right. Anyone else? A lot of liquidity, Rex. I, we, we know it's got a lot of liquidity. Doesn't mean that, but what does that mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, first thing I look at is this. Right here, when you look at this line right here, there's been a seller out here, and the stock doesn't trade that many shares. I mean, you could see it's got like, you know, it's not like these 50,000, 100,000 share sellers, but you can notice that you do got some big buyers out here, 20,000, 9,000. You could see how it was adding up, and the guy was basically, you know, refreshing. And not only that, but you had another big seller right here at 2450. Seller, seller, seller. Look, this is called a ladder. I call this a ladder effect. So you got the seller out here. It looks like he got, he did, he did, somebody did buy some of it. You can see down here at the bottom, uh, you can see the, the volume bar down here in the bottom right here. You see that right there? And not only that, but you could see it over here. But you know what? The guy kept adding to it. And there was more sellers that came in. Guy here, 40. Guy came at 30. 30,000, 20,000, 9,000. Another guy, 16,000. So as much as you would think the stock was going to break out at 24, it didn't. It didn't. And now it's down to, and if you didn't get out, and you didn't have that game plan, guess what? Now you're down 40 cents. Listen, you could always buy it cheaper. Let me, let me teach you basic trading. How do stocks go up and go down, everyone? How do stocks go up and go down? If you can't answer this question, you better quit trading. Well, what, is, what, what action are you talking about, Michael? How about this? I'm going to tell you something I failed in school uh, in a test. What's the definition of business? I wrote a big paragraph on it. I was completely wrong. My, my, my teacher told me it's two words, making money. You know what the definition, how stocks go up and go down? Buyers and sellers, supply and demand. If you don't know where the buyers and sellers are, you're trading blind. That is the power of the bookmap platform. You have to know where the buyers and sellers are. All right. That's how you have a game plan. Now, if you want to start implementing other tools, and then you're going to get you're going to get lost. So anyway, it was a pretty nice little thing. Let me look at something else because um, right here, it's going to bring this over. This is my trading room, okay? And I'm going to invite all of you guys to come here. These are all our instructors here, or our, our, our moderators right here, and you can see all the traders are in here, and they're all trading right now. Right now, they're looking at a stock. Uh, we'll look, we're using actually using the TradeStation platform. Uh, right here on the right is called the Matrix, which is I call level three. Uh, I call Bookmap level four because it's showing you orders. Very hard to see. You don't see the consistency, but um, you can see how that thing changes so quickly. But they're looking at the stock right here. He's actually talking. I muted it. But they're looking at a stock called HB, uh, HLBZ. Let's look at that stock really quick. HBLZ. 
they're looking at this one right here. All right. So before you buy the stock, what do you do? What's the first thing you need to do, everyone, before you buy the stock? Buy cheap, sell expensive markets. <laughs> I like that one. One of the, 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 the three things to, to trade today's market, what you have to do is this. Tradable, trend, and trap. The trap is the level four, but the tradable is the most important. Is the stock tradable? Meaning, does it have a good spread? Does it have good tier sizes? Does it have good volatility? Looking at the stock right here, okay, right right away looking at it, you'll notice the stock, you know, right here on level two, you see a lot of ones, right? You'll see the stock, the spread is really, really thick. It's not a tight spread. It's not a stock like CEI that we've been trading. Penny spread, you can get in, you can get out. Remember, before you buy it, you're gonna lose. So stock had a really nice pop, okay? Nice little move. So right away, looking at this stock, I would not trade the stock because it's too volatile. It's expensive and it's volatile. Why do I got to go out there and trade a stock, you know, um, $34? There's so many other stocks out there. And not only that, but I want to show you what the problem with this stock right here. It's on my watch list right here. If you notice, it is very, very complicated to read. You could see that there are resistance levels, big resistance levels here at 38, and you could see how it did in pre-market. And if you knew it, you should have got out. If you didn't, you wrote it down down to 31. Think about it, that's a big ad, that's a big loss, right? That's a very expensive drop. Could you imagine owning a thousand shares of that stock? 38 to 31. You just blew up your account, you know. But can you still trade an expensive stock like this? Sure, you could. You got some good tier sizes right here. You can see the supports. You can see the resistance levels. But it's not as clean. Oh, this one's not that good. Take this one out. This one died. This one died. There's a couple of stocks I found earlier. It's not as clean as like uh, as the QS. You know, we didn't, you know, you see a nice clean lines right here. All right. So before I ever buy a stock, no matter how fast it's moving, how, how good it's moving, the first thing I look at is, you know, Q, I look at the level four. All right. So let's look at this stock right here. Um, this one's moving. Let me see what this looks like. Let's bring up this stock right here. Uh, PTGX. All right. PTGX, all right? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to buy this stock right in here at uh, that market. Did I get it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. So I bought the stock right now here at um, $15. Now, question to everyone here is, is that a good trade or a bad trade? Good trade or bad? I threw everybody, I threw it through a curveball. Everybody it was like, wait, wait, you just bought that stock? Yeah, I bought it. Good trade or bad? Bad. You know why? Because I, I just sit out there because what happens, people go out there and they just buy stock just to buy it, right? Oh, it looks like it's going up. Great trend. The stock was $45. Maybe it's starting to make a, a little bit of a bounce. Yeah, it could. All right. But to buy a stock, you want to make sure that there's no sellers out there and we have buyers. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to bring this up here. And if you notice right here, see this right here? Stock 15. Look at all these orders out here. See that right there? Those are all iceberg orders. All right. And the guy kept showing up and he kept selling more and he kept selling more and selling more. Now, when I zoom in over here, you see this order right here? Exactly when I bought it, there was a 40,000 share seller that showed up at 1498. And not only that, but if you look right here, look what he did. He, he couldn't sell it, so he came down, he averaged down, he pushed it down even more, all the way down to, 
a price of 95, uh, 35. So 15 was a big resistance levels. Now, the only way the stock is going to go up if the guy cancels. But unfortunately, you notice he keeps popping his nose up here. You see now he just came back here at 19,000 at 1496. So apparently there's somebody has a lot of shares out there to sell. A lot. So looking at the stock, you could see here in the past 1032, 23, we're already, you know, we've been already about 10 minutes. The stock has been having a major, major resistance levels to get to get past this $15 price range because this guy keeps pop poking his nose out there. That is what we call refreshing. That means a guy is selling it, he's selling more, he's refreshing it. Now, until that guy gets executed, the stock is not getting past 15. All right. This guy has to get done. And it looks like he's going out there. This is my opinion when I'm seeing what he's doing. I'll tell you, it's style. He's going out there, he's updating his quote. He doesn't want people to see him out there. And once he see orders come in, he dumps it, he goes out there. Okay. Now it looks like look at this bar right here. 119,000 share. Everybody see it right there? It looks like. The guy did, there he comes again. See it? Man, this guy is pretty sneaky. So it looks like the guy got executed. He ran it up, and once people came in, he jumped in again. So it looks like he's got a lot of shares to sell. A lot. So you're in the position. What do you do? Do you hold on or you get out? What do you think? Look at the time in sales. Here's that seller out there, EDGX, right? I think that's him right there. He's not on NASDAQ. Well, unless you own it at a good price, you're dealing with a big seller out there that keeps selling it. Now, the way I would trade this stock right here, I would probably get out, and I would probably want to buy it when it finally breaks a little bit past 15.05. OK, that's basically what I would do. I would wait until these guys start getting done and start quitting. And it looks like. They're doing it now. Let's see. Oh, looks like he just came back in again. You see right here. Archipelago's got 20, 21,000 shares. So click on position. Go on Nasdaq. I usually load up two execution systems at a time, PTGX. I always let a, load up one at market. This is like the order routing system, and this is one for limit. And you know, looking at it, put a limit order out there to sell. I got an order out there to sell at 99. All right. This guy keeps poking his nose in there. Look, 7,000 at, at 96. That's him right there. That's NASDAQ 76. That's him right there. Look at time and sales. See if the guy gets executed. And we got done. We're out. So we pretty much broke even. Now, was that a good trade or a bad trade? Listen, as a professional trader, we have something that's called a 30 second rule. A 30 second rule means this. If you bought a stock within 30 seconds and it doesn't go up, chances are it's going to probably be a loser. All right. This stock can probably go up. But if you've been watching it, somebody keeps going out there and keeps refreshing and keeps selling it and selling it. This guy keeps coming out. This is the problem with level two versus level three. You can't see this. On level two. Level two, you only see in the best bid, the best offer. Look what just happened, everyone. What did the stock just do? Because, Pion, you lost. You said to hold on. Guess what? If you held on, you would have blew up your account right there. Not blew it up. You lost money. All right? Now, great that we lost a, you know, a penny, but you know what? I'd rather lose a penny than lose 10 cents. 10 cents, you know, I mean, it just adds up. 
just want to curious how much where it's going now do i see anybody out there i'm just going to go scroll back i mean look at all these orders that were out there tons of them now can it go up of course it could but apparently they got a lot of people that they're trying to get out of it till they sell it so until it gets past this 1505 i'm not interested i'm not interested. i don't have a problem paying more for a stock as long as it, it got past all these sellers. So guess what? Taking a loss is not a bad thing. It, 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 it's not really a bad thing at all. Um, let me see if there's anything else out there I could do a trade on that I can kind of show you. Because, you know, honestly, that's really the biggest thing that we teach at Cybertrain University. We don't teach people how to make money. We teach them how to stop losing it. Uh, anyway, this stock right here, I mean, I, it just made it just got halted right there anybody know what halted means it's just um hlbt just went from 35 dollars up to 39 as soon as we saw it somebody went out there and you can see right here there was these big iceberg orders took the guy out at 37 took the guy at 38 shot up all the way to the guy at 40 now it's halted Look at all these orders right there. Somebody came out there. If we watched it a little sooner, we probably could have probably could have jumped on it. But it looks like it happened all within 30 seconds. Wow, somebody really wanted to buy that stock. Look at that, up 24%, up 100 and 173%. Not bad. All right. Now, the other question people always ask me, can you use this on you know, brand name stocks? Of course you could. Let's look at Uber. Uber was one of the stocks that we had on our watch list this morning. Okay, and by the way, this is our watch list. Just wanna put in the chat room to show you guys. Uh, these are our stocks that we found this morning. Everybody see this right here? Right here. See that right there? At 9.13, UBL, uh, ULBZ, Uber, QS, and we had these two right there. That's what we basically traded this morning, all right? And um, if I clear this out, we actually do two watch lists. And if you look right here, I mean, uh, HBLZ didn't come until later, but there's the other ones that we founded, and that was at 7 o'clock this morning. This is all Eastern time. So those are the stocks that we watched. Look what these stocks end up doing. Yet Uber at 9 o'clock, that was nice, 42 to 43.50. That one did pretty well. HLBZ, that one did pretty damn well too, right? Uh, QS, that one did pretty well. All right. And then VC, that one didn't do well. I mean, at 930 this morning, actually got halted. It stopped trading. So I guess news came out. I don't know what's going on with that one. We'll have to check out it later. CI didn't really do much. Oh, um, H -H uh, HLBZ just opened up. Uh, now let me just show you what's going on right here because this is very difficult to do. This is only this is the only problem with bookmap um, with halts. You really can't focus on you know support and resistance that much. You can see this is by a tick uh, until the data comes in. You have to you see you can see some orders showing up right here now, but when you zoom in, it's kind of like it has a problem with the uh, the halt right here, so makes it a little bit difficult until the data starts kicking in. But uh, it's a really nice move. By the way, would anyone buy this stock right now? HLBZ? Pavon says no. <laughs> well, the first thing we always got to tell everyone, can you afford to trade it? Keith says, no way. Wow, I like that one. Very cool. Very cool. All right, so guys, we're coming up to the end. Does anyone have any questions of the style of what we do, how I use Bookmap, you know, and anything else? Anyone have any questions? 
because I know that you guys have a lot of great presenters. They all have a different way of using it, but you believe it or not, we all kind of trade the same, just maybe different markets, but, um, but it's all about knowing where support and resistance levels is. It's where it all comes down to. Now, um, how do you trade using book maps, sir? Just want to. Uh, I only use it for iceberg orders. And uh, the way I call iceberg orders are different than what, uh, what the book map does. I actually came up with that word during the movie of the Titanic. But the, I basically look for iceberg orders like this. See this iceberg order right here when I get these big red marks? 38,000 shares at 1440. Those are what I'm looking for. That's where I look to focus to buy and is where I focus to sell. Just follow the big orders and follow and seeing if these orders are getting filled by keeping an eye on the, you know, the CVP and also the volume and the time and, and the ticks. Now, um, if anyone here just had a, would like to come and join us, um, if you guys want to join this trading room with all the traders and my instructors and seeing the stock that we're trading. Uh, let me just tell you our agenda, what we do. Uh, we usually start, we open up the room at 7.30 in the morning and we do a lot, and because we have our students do, we do a lot of pre-market trading with our students. We do a live audio broadcast. We broadcast live on YouTube also at 9 a.m. Uh, then um, we do a live audio market commentary for about 30 minutes, I mean, for an hour. And then uh, we have free time in the middle of the day, or we teach our class in the middle of the day. Today, we actually have Traders Talk that we're doing at 11. You guys are more than welcome to join if, uh, if you jump in our trial. Uh, come in the afternoon, we do another live audio broadcast um, at 2.30. We do also do it on broadcast on YouTube. And then we do live audio commentary right around from 3 to 4 the last hour. That pretty much does it. So... It's not a full-time job as a trader, just let you know. There is a lot of good free time. I know there are some of you that are logged in from all over the world and can't be at a certain time than others, but the two best times to trade are the first hour and the last 30 minutes of the close. Uh, you could trade in the middle of the day. You don't have to trade all day, but I like trading with my traders. I train my traders because when I'm done with you, I could jump in and pick up where they left off. That's the beauty about trading with a team. Now, um, if anybody wants to join, and do a quick little trial. It's very cheap, $9, money back guarantee. We do this just so we know who you are. Uh, you're gonna get some bonus videos. You're gonna get some live, you're gonna get the live trading. You'll be in the room all week. You're gonna see us use book map. You know, I know it's it's not expensive. People are like, What's, that doesn't sound right. People charge thousands. Listen, to train somebody is a lot of work, but if you, you gotta, you first gotta see if it's your style and what they're doing. I can't teach you how to trade an hour, guys. Um, but I could definitely show you in a week. So give it a shot, $9 trial, and go from there. Uh, let me just give you the link, and I'm going to stick around for a couple of more minutes. Hold on. We'll stick around for a couple of more minutes, and we'll pick up where we left off. Here's our website. By the way, I'm doing another live demonstration today, too. Uh, here's the trial link. Just click on it if you guys want to register. All right, any other questions at anyone? Just put that link in there for you. All right. Any other questions? No, you're more than, more than welcome. Uh, what are you doing when the price goes um, to big lot orders book? Just was a second retest or how? Thanks. Mark, I mean, the way I look at that is that, like, um, it all depends if they're refreshing. You know, when they're testing that second time and they're breaking out, you got to see it. Like, like, let me bring let me bring this back to you again. Look, look at PFTG, right? It came all the way down to 82 cents. Now it looks like it was going to break up. Look, it went right back to where we sold it. All of a sudden, this guy comes back again. All right? He just came back. Oh, it looks like he got filled. Looks like he got filled right here. Looks like he finally got filled. But look, he just came back down over here a little bit more. You can see that they're doing a ladder, but if that guy gets filled, you know, and constantly keeps refreshing, you got to use the book map to, to see that trend. But until that guy gets done, you know, it's not going anywhere. 
Any other questions? Well, uh, Fausto, I, so um, I also uh, just just pasted in all, all the links, et cetera, uh, for, uh, it, you know, to your website, et cetera, um, uh, and um, YouTube channel and, and whatnot. Uh, so people can also reach out to you there, but uh, maybe repaste in that, uh, that special offer for the course uh, on top of it. Uh, yes, just, I just didn't paste that again there. Sorry. Because, uh, uh, yeah, maybe people it? don't. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's the link right there. Yeah. You can also get it on our website. And listen, you know what? The worst thing that could happen, you guys, is that you learn how to trade. But let me just tell everybody here, listen, you, you know, there's some great softwares out there, uh, but you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. And if you like a platform that works really well, like using the book map, you're like, wow, you know what? I really like Fausto, how he, you know, how he teaches this and that. You, it's, it's not about me te us just teaching you. You got to surround yourself with good traders. I can't be there and, you know, and cook fish for you every day. But if I could teach you how to fish, I feed you for life. It's the same thing about using the bookmap platform. If someone could show you how to use it and, and, and you're trading with people that are using it the same exact way, you're going to learn quicker and faster. It's a great platform. I use it every day. I can't trade without it. Okay. But if you want to make a career in trading, one of the greatest jobs in the world, you got to learn before you could earn, and you got to surround yourself with good schools and good training schools. Um, Payan says, um, I'm kind of new to trading. The course does it help me. Well, the, it's not going to hurt you. <laughs> Listen, did you learn anything today? Imagine, you know, if you were able to see it more basic. I know I was a little bit more advanced, but yeah, I mean, you're going to learn a lot. You got to start somewhere. No problem. All right, guys. So listen, um, I got to run uh, and uh, I got another event that starts in less than 10 minutes. Uh, we're doing a, a 11 o'clock and our traders are in there now. So uh, but uh, but listen, you got my email. I know Mark and everyone else. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of like to explain that more towards you. But send me an email. And I'll be happy to answer those questions in great detail. OK, so uh, and hell, you know what? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll jump on a call. All right. Listen, I would rather you guys, you, you traders, know what you're getting yourself involved in before you start making a big investment to something because you could lose it all in one trade. But you got to learn before you can earn. All right, everyone. So, Bruce, thank you very much for having me. And like I said, I look forward to seeing you all in, uh, maybe we'll seeing in the trading room. If not, you know, maybe in the future. But just go be happy. Go view, go view our YouTube channel. We've got some great videos on Bookmap. Uh, I think it's some more demonstrations, more explanations. And, uh, you know, like I said, and if you want to trade with a team that's using it every day, click on that link and register with us. Thanks, everybody, for having us. Bruce, be safe in New York City, and I uh, hope to see you all soon. You too. Thank you very much, Fausto.